When they hear the cry, they fly. Stay tuned to learn about a ministry that takes a unique approach when it comes to disaster relief. My name is Jason Bradley, and you're watching Urban Report. Hello and welcome to Urban Report. My guest today is Bruce Wilkerson, Vice President of Project Development for Adventist World Aviation. Welcome to Urban Report, Bruce. Thank you, Jason. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's, it's great to have you here. You know, I'm fascinated by the world of aviation and all of that. How did you get involved uh, with just flying? Well, flying, I've been in a part of airplanes all my life. I grew up in the backseat of, of a small airplane. My dad was a flight instructor and uh, we were always flying everywhere. Wow. And so I, then naturally I, I became uh, involved in flying through my father, mm -hmm. but I think additionally, as I became older, God led me back to flying as part of a, a, a deep-seated dream. You know, the theme, dare to dream? Yes, absolutely. Well, absolutely. I dare to dream and make those dreams become a reality. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what I did. Amen. And how did you become involved with uh, AWA? Well, it started, uh, real quick, 30-second uh, version. Uh, in 1998, I was uh, searching for truth, mm -hmm. and I had just uh, finished the Net 98 series. Okay. Uh, it was an evangelistic series in those days, and I learned about um, a ministry that was using flying. I was in the Army at the time, flying as a tool to bring the gospel to other people. And mm. immediately it caught my interest because I knew that I grew up with planes and that that would be an interesting thing for me to be involved in. Mm -hmm. So I started supporting Adventist World Aviation in 1998. I started as a supporter. Wow, so you started as a supporter and yes. then you ended up getting involved with them. Yes, and in, in, in 2012 I became, my wife and I became um, uh, full-time missionaries, and we started serving with Adventist World Aviation as uh, project manager in Guyana, and then we went to the Philippines, and then vice president. That's, the rest is a story. <laughs> that's beautiful. Well, tell us all about Adventist World Aviation, and, and what's its mission? Well, Adventist World Aviation's mission is, is to carry the gospel message into all the world, mm -hmm. the Great Commission. Uh, Matthew 28. So we live that by carrying a message physically. We bring Bibles, literature, we bring patients, we do humanitarian work, humanitarian flights. It could be patient evacuation. It could be delivering personnel to a destination. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk more about it today, I guess, uh, in, this, in this message. Wow. So you, you carry patients and all of this. So what's the setup of the plane? Like how, how do you put patients in there? Are these patients that can sit up? Like, how's that work? Well, in the States, in the, in the urban environments in the States, we do mercy flights called angel flights. Mm -hmm. and, and they are basically flights for people that, that are compromised health situations. They're not a medevac situation in the U.S. because we have an advanced medical system in the U.S., but we do mercy flights, which people have to be able to sit up typically. Mm -hmm. We can configure our, like our Cessna 182s and our 206s, we can configure them to put patients laying down. But normally the patients are sitting up. Now overseas, our Cessna 182s that fly overseas, we can configure them. We have jump seats in the back and they fold up and we can put um, a patient in a, in a prone position okay. or sitting up, depending on what the situation might be. Gotcha, gotcha. And how have world events in the recent years presented challenges in the way that you operate? Oh, good question, Jason. <laughs> I, I guess everybody now is, is a fully aware of the traumatic events that's happened since 2000. Mm -hmm. I mean, 2020, mm -hmm. COVID has changed the way we have to do business worldwide. It's impacted many missionary organizations across denominational lines, including Adventist World Aviation. Our foreign post, we were, because of travel restrictions, we were inhibited from getting back to them. And we had to bring a bunch of missionaries home because frankly, in 2020, no one knew what was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. It was unknown how bad this was gonna be. So there's a lot of people that were really concerned and, and afraid. And I, I get it, you know, that life happens that way, yes. but God is good. Mm -hmm. And when you're handed lemonades, what do you do? You make, make lemonade, lemonade. Make lemonade. Mm -hmm. and that's where God led us to a, a new ministry 
opportunity, which was disaster response ministry. Wow. So in disaster response ministry, we're able to, and in the mercy flight ministry that we have in the States, we're able to reach people that are in crisis, they're in trauma, mm -hmm. and bring them the word of God. Mm -hmm. There's a thing in, in um, the medical community called the golden hour. Okay. And that means with when patients sustain traumatic injuries, you have minutes to get them to sustainable life-saving care at a hospital. Wow. And if you can get them through a hospital within an hour, you have a great chance of saving their life. Mm -hmm. Well, we find that in disaster response ministry or in trauma situations, the same thing exists in a spiritual golden hour. People who typically are not open to hearing the gospel message or hearing God's word are more open mm -hmm. because the two big things they're looking for is why did this happen? God's word, we have the answer in Matthew 24, for example, Amen. for disasters. And do I have hope for the future? Mm -hmm. And we have this hope. And we have this hope with a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's, that's what we bring people is the word of God and hope through mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Amen. And we, we got to share it. Amen. We've got to share it. That's our commission. So, okay. I, I just want to get this in my mind, okay. right? Okay. So you fly, you're flying a patient. You, let's say you land at an airport or in some cases a field or mm -hmm. wherever. Does an ambulance meet you at the airport? How do they get from the airport to the hospital? Okay. So just like they got to us in, in the beginning, before we departed on the flight, it can be by a litter, it can be by an ambulance, it can be by a vehicle of some kind. But when we get to our destination, we're flying to a place that will have a hospital care. Mm -hmm. Interesting enough, we spent five years in Guyana, South America, and when we were, we've coordinated ahead of time for the ambulance to be there on a tarmac because the patient is a trauma case normally, breech mm -hmm. pregnancy, some kind of uh, stroke victim or something like that. And we get to the tarmac and guess what? The ambulance is not there waiting for us. This is third world operations. You know, mm -hmm. things don't always happen very quickly in a third world environment, but an ambulance is, to answer your question, is what comes eventually. Okay. And it's really nerve wracking to arrive at the tarmac and we're a medevac flight and they've given us priority to come in. And then when you get there with the patient, no ambulance. Oh, so yes. we pray, we try to encourage the patient, mm -hmm. and we make several phone calls <laughs> yeah. trying to get the ambulance. Are you guys coming? Let's come on. Yes, let's go. Or do we need to drive them? Or yeah, what, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We have actually done that one time. We called a taxi, and we put the patient in the taxi, and we took them there because we we could not wait any longer. We want to get mm -hmm. the patient to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to improvise. For sure. For sure. Um, with so many disasters that seem to be happening back to back to back, how do you determine which ones to respond to and where to go? Well, by the Holy Spirit. I mean, when God calls, when he leads, we follow. Mm -hmm. And so, and we're always, I and mean, not always, but a lot of times we have a crisis of belief. Can we actually do this mission? And for example, when Haiti happened in 2021, in August, there was a 7.2 magnitude earthquake that ruptured Haiti. Now, Haiti had another one in 2010, and they still hadn't recovered fully from that one. Mm -hmm. And it was cataclysmic as far as how it impacted the structure. And Lakai, Haiti was the epicenter of the earthquake. Uh, another great thing that's happened during this you know, COVID lockdown and this COVID um, restrictions is we've been partnering with other ministries. Mm -hmm. And this is how we came about. It was during the Haiti event, uh, Gideon Rescue Company, they are, they've been on 3 yes, a.m. before. I've interviewed them on Urban Report before okay. too, yeah, yeah. And they're great guys and we partner with like-minded organizations like Gideon Rescue, To Serve, that do disaster response and CERT training. So Gideon Rescue called us and said, ask us, hey, Evidence World Aviation, can you fly us to Haiti? We have some, a team there now helping out in Lakai at the hospitals because they have medical people and everything. Mm -hmm. We have two more relief people that need to get there. Can you take us there? Well, I know you're a pilot, Jason. A Comanche, a Piper Comanche or a Cessna 182 doesn't really fly that well, you know, you know across a long stretch of ocean yes. to Haiti. That's mm -hmm. not what you ideally want to do. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why we're looking at moving up to turbines. If we had turbine aircraft, we could actually you know, do the mission a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But they called and I said, wow, 
Uh, some of our aircrafts were down for annuals, but let me call one of our volunteers. I called Bob, he's a volunteer pilot. He, what's unique about Bob and his Piper Comanche is that he owns property in Long Island, Bahamas. Really? And so he flies down there all the time. Now, Bob, I uh, hope he's not listening, but maybe he is, but <laughs> he is an atheist. Yeah, oh, he doesn't believe okay. in God. But, but he, we actually like to say, Bob, you're an Adventist, you just don't know it yet. Yep. You know, yep. so he volunteers his plane and his time to serve with us. Mm -hmm. So he uh, took me and the two other Gideon Rescue people. We met them at Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport and we launched out in IFR conditions. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, solid IFR conditions yes. at 0600. Now expl explain that to oh. our, our viewers. They may not know what I am, IFR conditions I'm sorry. are. Instrument this... flight requirements. Yes. And, it, and it was completely socked in weather. I mean, you can't see anything cloudy. Mm -hmm. So we took off into that soup, as they call it, Yes. And over open ocean. And mm -hmm. it was a little disconcerting because there was a storm that was clearing up and there was a lot of turbulence. So our passengers in the back felt a little um, uneasy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we had the most critical asset on our airplane. You know what that was? Not IV fluids. It was the word of God. Amen. We had Bibles. We had Christian literature, like the great controversy. Yes. We had tracks mm -hmm. in Creole and French. Mm -hmm. And so we were trying to get them into Haiti so that people, we could help them out physically. You know, we were helping out the hospital, helping in the community, but we needed to be able to get the word of God to them. Amen. Because we can pray with them and share tracks with them. We can hopefully introduce at a pivotal time, God's word to somebody who may not be open to hearing at any other time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. And I know that you've responded to several natural disasters. Um, you just mentioned Haiti. Yes. Um, but how have you seen God move uh, in, in your response to those disasters? Well, I've, I've seen God move in incredible ways. Um, let me uh, highlight one incident in uh, a situation in, in Grand Island, Louisiana, or mm -hmm. Hurricane Ida. Uh, the dam broke in Grand Island, and this is a big fishing community, and we're talking about sailor-type uh, people. The, the EMS, the fire department, they were, um, their language choices were not, let's say, the best. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, if you have sensitive ears, you would have been uneasy. Mm -hmm. But when God sends you into that environment to help the people of the local area, and these EMS and firefighters and police were helping their local communities, but we saw an, a ministry opportunity yeah. was to help the firefighters and the first responders because mm -hmm. no one was helping them. Mm -hmm. So we, every night, and every morning, our small group had worship. And of course, you know, their, their natural word vocabulary choices were a little bit um, uh, different. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> but to say the least. <laughs> after uh, several days of worshiping on the beach and singing praises to God, mm -hmm. one of the firefighters approached the group. He was watching us. He said, you know, he came up to us afterwards and said, you know, I, I, I was raised a Christian, but, you know, obviously I'm not, you know, involved in the ministry anymore. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. And he said, would it be okay if I joined your group? And so this grizzly firefighter who had um, you know, obviously has experienced a lot of tr different things in his life. <laughs> yes. Has joined our group and began worshiping with the group. And that was a, an opportunity where God was able to use us wow. as disaster responders. If we just came there just for that one firefighter, mm -hmm. it was worth it. Amen. Because Christ came to this earth for just me and just you and yes. just everybody here. Yes. It would come for just one person. So in a disaster response, if we can minister to just one person, mm -hmm. praise God. I would also like to talk about what happened in Mayfield, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. In December 2021, Mayfield, Kentucky was hit by a cataclysmic tornado. You may remember that, an F4 tornado mm -hmm. it was on the ground for 240 miles and created destruction like I have never seen in my lifetime. Yes. And I've seen some pretty crazy stuff. But um, it was almost like a giant took his, a giant rake or a hand and went across Kentucky. And in its path was Mayfield. Mm -hmm. And that's only about an hour and a half south of here. Yes. And went across the state. You could see this big line of destruction. Mm -hmm. Mayfield took a direct hit. And it was like downtown West Frankfort, those old brick buildings, 100 mile, 180 mile an hour winds. When it hits those kind of buildings, mm -hmm. they just implode. And it was a big pile of rubble everywhere. And it was eerie. I still get cold chills remembering that it was crazy how yeah. much destruction there was and loss of life. It was 
the candle factory got a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. um, the Glade Candle Factory. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of people trapped in there. Um, I think miraculously, a lot of people survived that. We brought in a team from North Carolina, from our headquarters in North Carolina, and uh, they had a, a Mooney, I believe it was Mooney. No, it was either, yeah, the Mooney. They brought the Mooney in, and it did aerial surveys. So a lot of times in, in search and rescue mm -hmm. operations or disaster response, the aviation element does aerial surveys, okay. and we'll do turns around a point. Ah, and, nice. Where, and it turns around a point for those who are not aviation mm -hmm. enthusiasts or pilots. It's where you pick a point on the ground, like a, a building or something, and you just do orbital turns. You just mm -hmm. do slow turns or steep turns around this point, but it's, it's so that we could take videos of the destruction in a different area by Kentucky Lake, which yeah. the main emphasis was the candle factory in Mayfield, but over by Kentucky Lake and Dawson Springs, there was lots of damage there too. I mean, it just wiped out the community. Yeah. And so we were circling over this one point, which was a home. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on, as the getting rescue team was moving through that area, mm -hmm. they came across this house with smoke coming out of the chimney. Wow. And, um, and so they went and knocked on the door, is anybody home? And come to find out there was a vet there, um, a veteran, mm -hmm. and, um, and the veteran had um, a lot of um, emotional baggage that he was still dealing with, mm -hmm. including some alcoholism and everything else. And uh, we have some team members, including myself, that are veterans, and um, they, um, talked to him outside for a little bit, mm -hmm. and he unfolded this story. And this is pretty cool. Listen to this. It's sad but cool. Um, he has experienced a lot of depression, mm -hmm. yeah, PTSD, other kinds of things going on, and uh, he was about ready to end his life. Whoa! So he threw a rope over the tree in his front yard. Yeah. Put a chair, and was about ready to end it all. And uh, and then God sent the tornado, which took out the tree with mm. a rope on it and took it away. It just <laughs> wow. And so when the storm came, it, it took the tree and the rope away. Uh -huh. he, ran into his, he, he ran into his home to hunker down and hide, you know, because it was a pretty scary storm in the wind. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, he was getting ready to end it. God it, canceled those plans. He said, nope, I'm not done with it yet. Yes, yes. And so our guys um, were able to talk with him uh, minister him, talk about the hope that we can find in a relationship with Christ. Now, the guy is still going through a lot of uh, recovery, a mm -hmm. lot of um, therapy and everything else, and still struggling with a lot of issues. So uh, please pray for him. Mm -hmm. um, I'd rather not say his name on, yeah. on, the, on the program, but he needs prayer. He's, he's, a, he's a good guy. He's done a lot of great service and a lot of pretty, he was a special forces medic mm -hmm. in, in uh, Southwest Asia. So he had a lot of trauma he has to have him deal with. Yes. But if we came to Mayfield just for that one guy, yes, it's all worth it, right? Amen. And the fact that we were doing turns around a point, mm -hmm. he, he said he remembers seeing our aircraft, so we showed him the video that they took, and the turn around the point, the point that we had picked was his house, was his wow. home. You look on the video, and the circle that we were flying around was his home, was right in the center. How about that? That is incredible. That's, I mean, that's miraculous. That's a miracle. That's what God does. Yeah, you know? yeah. He, he, so being willing to be used by God mm -hmm. to fulfill his great commission yes. is really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. So you say, do you know about what disasters you're going to choose? And actually, no, it's uh, God, you know, Matthew 24 talks about the, as we get towards the closer to the end of time, mm -hmm. these things will increase. Yes. And when people call, and they ask for help, Yeah, that's when we respond. Yes. And so we are looking at disasters and we're looking at tornadoes and we're looking at hurricanes and we're looking at opportunities to respond. But I tell you, God is in the business of reconciling the whole world mm -hmm. to himself through Jesus Christ. Amen. And if we as Christians, brothers and sisters, are willing to be used by him, we can go to, we don't have to be pilots. We don't have to be disaster response missionaries, mm -hmm. but we have to be willing to be used by God. Mm -hmm. And when we do, he will take whatever skills that we have and he will equip us with that ability to go and serve others. And the, you know, you can't, when somebody's facing disaster, they lost their home, a tree's collapsed on their home, they're not wanting to hear the word of God right then. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to come in and help them physically. And that's yes. what we do. Pull the tree off, remove muck from the house, mm -hmm. um, bring supplies in, carry a patient out, 
whatever you can do to make a physical difference in their life, when yeah. you do that, then they want to know why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. when you tell, you ask to pray with them, you share the Word of God, you share Christian literature, like Great Controversy, Absolutely. you share Bibles, tracts, mm -hmm. whatever you can to inspire them to look to God for the answer of hope and restoration. Amen. And what you're talking about is Christ's method of evangelism. Amen. Right? That's it. So, you, you know, you go, you get to know the people, you find out what their needs are, and you meet those needs, and then you tell them to follow Christ. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. And that's, so that's the lemonade that we made when God, when the life handed us lemons. Yes. I think God sometimes does that when he wants us to refocus our attention on different areas. Mm -hmm. And it's really a blessing if we keep our heart and minds tuned to him, we can be changed as well as the people that we minister to. Yes. I know I've been changed by these experiences mm -hmm. and I know others have been too. Mm -hmm. So participating in God's work will change your life. Mm -hmm. Not just the lives of the people you're serving, but your life. Amen. So would you say, or is it safe to say that flying and being with AWA has strengthened your faith? Oh, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. it rewind uh, to 2000, and 2000, 20 years ago, 2000, uh, and, the, and the person I am today, the person I was in 2016 is not the person that's sitting here today. I am much, de praise God, I am mm -hmm. I'm still a lot of work in progress. Just ask my wife. That's all of us. <laughs> That's all of I us. have a lot of, you know, way, long ways to go, but praise God, Christ is alive in me and he's continuing to shape me in each and every day of my life. Amen, amen. Yeah. Now, I, I see that we have some oh. magazines here. Yes, sir. Uh, what, what are these and? Um, well, if, if we have uh, any of your viewers that are interested in learn how they can become involved with AWA. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways to do is visit our website. And that's one way to do it. That's uh, www.flyawa.org. But another way to do it is they can get one of our magazines. And we have Airways Magazine. This picture is, this issue was about the Haiti. Okay. Uh -huh. We have ones about our missionaries in Nicaragua. And I other, remember them. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is the uh, Renee family. You yes. interviewed them, I believe, on another yes. ABM program. Mm -hmm. But the magazines are completely free. They'll come to your your mailbox and you can read about our stories. They also can be downloaded from a website, but to me, I'm, I'm liking paper. Yes. And I, I have technology, but I really like the paper because mm -hmm. to me, it's just a different different experience. Yeah, I signed up uh, to get my copies. You did, you did. Yes. Thank you, Jason, we appreciate that. And and, um, and so we have, the, we have the magazines, we have a YouTube page mm -hmm. with videos of of different um, experiences that we've had in AWA so people can nice. get inspired. In fact, I'd like to add one thing about our uh, newest missionary family. Okay. They are the Hamambe family. Mm -hmm. They're from Zambia. He used to be a Zambian Air Force pilot and police pilot. Wow. And he was having difficulty, just a quick uh, snippet about this. He was having challenges with, with spending more time with his family, with the Sabbath and everything. Mm -hmm. So he resigned from the military and miraculously they allowed him to resign. And then what happened? He was at home figuring out what to do next with his pilot skills. And he was live streaming through ABN. Wow. And he saw our interview on 3ABN uh -huh. at Adventist World Aviation and said, I can do that. And so he contacted us and t that was, I believe it was about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Today, fast forward, he is in the Philippines, ser him and his family serving as missionaries in the Philippines. Wow. That's how fast God can work. Yes. When you give yourself to him, he's in the business of equipping the called. Amen. And is he calling some of your viewers today, maybe he is. Amen. So I want to encourage your viewers, if they feel the calling from God, mm -hmm. if they feel that he is stirring him to be involved, you don't have to be a pilot or a mechanic, although we need lots of pilots and mechanics. Yes. Uh, we would ask them to please consider prayerfully giving it to God and then reaching out and contacting us. At the end of this program, we're going to share, I believe, the contact yes, information. Yes, absolutely. So absolutely. Can, you know, I'm fascinated by ATC or air traffic control, ah. right? And all of the, the different planes, all of the, the things they have to say to the pilots to make sure that they're safe and that, you know, arrange all the logistics, you know, and the planning and the coordinating that goes into all of that. But then I think about God and Amen. just with, you know, you doing this aerial flight around, turns around a point and it's that guy's house. 
God is the ultimate logistics coordinator. He is. And I mean, it's just, it blows my mind to see how he works in so many different situations and brings people together. He does, and for his glory and for his purpose. Amen. And it's, it's just amazing how he can connect people with divine appointments. And I believe that's what that gentleman was when we connected that gentleman in Mayfield, Kentucky. That was a divine appointment. The firefighter in uh, Grand Island, Louisiana, that was a divine appointment. Mm -hmm. And others that we met in Haiti as well. Absolutely. And so it's about being used by God yes. in a powerful way so that his name can be glorified. Amen. What are some of the greatest needs of AWA at this time? Well, you probably already guessed some of it, but really what we need is support for two of our missionary families. Our newest missionary family, the Rene family in uh, Nicaragua, mm -hmm. Central America, and the Homambe family in Palawan, the Philippines. Okay. They could use support you know, prayers and financial support would be beneficial for them. And they send newsletters and contact you and everything okay. else. The other thing that we're looking for, you know, I said about flying a Piper Comanche to Haiti. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so one of the things we like to do is upgrade the turbines. Okay. So if a lot of times we have viewers out there that are uh, connected to aviation, mm -hmm. they know people that um, have a turbine or have yeah. the ability to, uh, donate turn out a turbine aircraft to AWA. We would love to move into turbines, okay. but only according to God's will. Yes. So we okay. put it out there, and, and we've been my my uh, my partner here in the uh, Midwest mm -hmm. office, Joe Birdie, and I have been praying about moving to turbines. And, oh, nice. And so we would love to see that happen. Absolutely. Well, how can people get in touch with you? We want to put up your contact information okay. and uh, let them know how they can support. Um, so we'll we'll take a look at that. Okay. So Adventist World Aviation, we're at 4421 Airport Drive, Northwest, Wilson, North Carolina, 27896. You can call us at 919-938-2920 or go to our website, flyawa.org to see b um, numerous information about our organization. I would encourage you to, to explore the website, our YouTube page. And if you wanna talk to someone when you call, ask for uh, Pastor Rick. Pastor Rick is our president. I have his email address on the, uh, on the, on the screen there. Mm -hmm. Pastor Rick would be able to, he actually enjoys talking to people who are interested in becoming missionaries with mm -hmm. AWA. He really wants, personally, yes. he reaches out and touches those people. And his email address was president at flyawa.org. Yes, sir. Okay, yes. Real quick, I want you to look into this camera and speak to that person at home and share what's on your heart. Well, I'd like to share with your viewers a thought. Have you ever wanted to be involved in missionary work? Have you ever wanted to be a missionary? Now, Adventist World Aviation needs pilots, needs people. So I encourage you to call us, contact us, and see how God's leading. Yes, and I hope that they will take you up on that. I hope that they will reach out to you. It's a wonderful thing that's taking place at Adventist World Aviation. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, sir. And we want to thank you for joining us. Remember, it just wouldn't be the same without you.